Welcome back to my channel. I'm Tamir N6JJ and today we're going to talk about amateur radio satellite operation and it's a great uh, video to someone that don't know a lot about that and do want to try uh, ham radio satellites um, so I will try to give uh, as much information as I can to get you into uh, uh, that part of the hobby um, and even if you have some experience with satellite I'm sure that you will find some uh, information that it will be interesting and especially at the end I do have some uh, uh, set of tips that maybe can help you um, to work better with satellite so first let's try to understand why why should we try that uh, ham radio satellite operation um, uh, you see that first it's part of the hobby like uh, uh, SSB CW digital contest award satellite is another part with very easy uh, steps you can try that you don't need so much time invest on that for example if you do some contest uh, that for example 24 hours contest or you look for some uh, DX uh, it takes some hours satellites passes are very um, very short can be like from five six minutes ten minutes fifteen minutes maybe the max um, so you can do continue your life and just here and there move to your um, um, uh, to your hobby go outside with your antenna and you take a few minutes for yourself try the satellites easy um, you don't need an expensive equipment uh, if you compare that to an uh, HF uh, station if you want you want the transceiver and antenna and all the cables and all what's coming with it um, satellites need very very uh, simple and cheap uh, um, especially for the start for the beginners uh, equipment and I will um, elaborate on that um, in this video uh, in addition that uh, it's uh, not expensive uh, it's also don't need too much space uh, you, what you need the minimum to do some uh, satellite here so it's like um, transceiver like that for example um, and, um, and some antenna that are not big uh, most of them can be uh, a handheld antenna and you will see it here in this video another thing that uh, even like satellite like other uh, part of this hobby a lot that will give you uh, recognize for some achievements that you will do and that can give you some motivation so lots of fun can be here so satellite operation it's fun it's easy it's cool there is no reason that you will not try to do that so let's get started So what we are going to cover? Uh, we will talk about few uh, orbits that out there in space. There are lots of types of orbits, but we will mention only three that are relevant to ham radio. Interesting to understand the, um, the, the difference between them. Uh, we will talk about satellite types that we have. Uh, for example, we have the FM uh, uh, satellite, we have the uh, linear transponders, and even we have the stone forward um, uh, satellites uh, not so popular uh, but they are very interesting uh, about what we can do with them uh, we'll mention Oscar why what is that name actually that you will hear about that a lot uh, we'll talk about satellites mode it's important to understand different between satellites mode when you want to operate a satellite we will mention the Doppler shift that's very important uh, um, uh, when we use a satellite I will mention uh, uh, some terminology uh, that you need to be familiar with when you read article about that or even using some software um, that you will find some terminology and you need to understand what are they um, uh, also we will uh, talk about what equipment actually we need to work with the satellite about transceiver antenna software thing like that uh, uh, we will mention about uh, AMSAT uh, that's an interesting organization that you do need to, uh, uh, to be familiar with uh, lots of information uh, will come from them and at the end we will talk about the actual practical uh, guide on how to actually do the QSO uh, very simple very short but uh, it will give you more confidence on get into it and fast and at the end I will mention a set of tips that are, are interesting 
can uh, do your life much easier when you do uh, the satellite's operation. So let's get started with the types of orbits. Uh, as I mentioned, there are uh, lots of types of orbits out there, but we are going to talk about only three that are more relevant uh, to us to understand um, all these things that's called satellites. Uh, first, uh, we'll mention, uh, we'll talk about the LEO, it's the low Earth orbit, we'll talk about the MEO, the medium Earth orbit, and we move to the GEO, geostationary orbit, very interesting orbit. Uh, about uh, the LEO, the LEO is the lower one. Uh, the satellites that orbit will be in about 160 to 2000 uh, kilometer above the Earth. Uh, in this type of orbits, uh, we will find smaller satellites. Uh, the satellites are close, uh, very close to the Earth. Um, it's very easy and cheap to launch these kinds of satellites because they are tiny, so you need even like a uh, a smaller rocket to do that uh, launch. Since these satellites are very close to the Earth, they are covering very um, small area. We'll talk about something that's called footprint. Um, so if um, uh, you want to cover lots of uh, space from Earth with this kind of orbit, we will, we will need more, uh, more satellites. And since we need more satellites, it means that we will need more frequencies to each of the satellites, so we'll, it will not be, each satellite will not interfere uh, other satellites. Uh, estimation for this kind of uh, orbital period for this kind of orbit is uh, about 90 minutes. It's very, very fast. This is the reason that we, uh, we will mention um, why uh, this QSO is very short. It will be about uh, minutes, not more than that. Um, and one of the benefits that the, this type, uh, kind of orbit is very low and, and close to the Earth is very good for um, um, uh, mobile communication because there's um, less latency, very low latency in this kind of communication. Uh, we'll move to the MEO. MEO is the medium Earth orbit. The satellites will be around between 2,000 and 35,785 kilometers. That's very high. Um, uh, but it's a um, bunch of range uh, there. Um, uh, even that the satellite is more higher than the low orbit, um, we still need a set of satellites to cover um, uh, lots of space uh, on Earth. Uh, the most common use in this kind of uh, um, orbits are the GPS satellites that all of us are familiar with. Satellites, um, um, GPS are located around 22,000 kilometer and the uh, uh, orbital uh, period is, uh, is uh, 12 hours. Uh, in this kind of uh, orbit, the satellites are bigger than the uh, uh, low orbit. Uh, and since they are bigger and they are higher, they will need more power for um, transmission. And since they are more higher, they have more, a bit more latency. Let's move to the GEO, the Geostationary Equatorial uh, Orbit, uh, that's located uh, exactly at 35,786 km above Earth. Uh, this is a very unique uh, orbit, and the reason is that um, uh, at that height where the uh, satellite is located, it will always appear stationary above the same point on Earth. If we will look to that satellite, it will, we will have the illusion that the satellite is not moving. But it's a kind of, it's just an illusion because, because Earth is moving, the satellite is moving with us in the same speed, and for us it looks like it's not moving at all. Uh, this kind of orbit is always, always uh, around the equator of the Earth. Um, interesting with this kind of orbit, since the satellite is not moving, when we direct our antennas to this kind of satellites, the antenna does not need to move, so um, it's static uh, direction for the antenna. Very easy to set this kind of um, uh, satellite uh, communication, especially for um, uh, broadcasting TV, things like that. And we will have less interference from obstacle on Earth because the antenna is looking always all the at, the, at the same spot where the satellite is located. 
and if we compare that to the lower orbit when the satellite is moving very fast from one horizon to the other horizon and sometimes some building or mountain will be in between us. Okay, so let's talk about satellite types that we have. Uh, the first one and the most popular that in use is the FM repeaters. Um, FM repeater is like, uh, like the standard FM repeaters that we're familiar uh, on Earth that you communicate with uh, um, the repeater. Uh, the difference between uh, Earth's FM repeater and satellite FM repeater is that on Earth um, we are using most of the time actually we are using um, uh, to transmit and receive the signal on the same band. With satellites uh, we are transmitting to the satellite in one band, for example VHF, and that's the uplink, and we're receiving the signals, that's the downlink, for, to the other band, for example UHF. It could be uh, different bands, but the idea is the uplink we transmit in one band, and we're receiving the downlink in a different band. Uh, example for popular uh, FM repeaters that uh, uh, will be easy to use uh, for your first QSO uh, will be the SO50, AO91, and AO92. In this picture, we can see an example of how it will looks like. Uh, we see uh, two uh, stations uh, and, uh, and the satellites above us, and you can see that each station uh, sending the transmission with the uplink, in this example is the VHF, and uh, the station that's getting the information, getting it uh, using the downlink on the UHF and vice versa. Uh, let's move to the linear uh, transponders. Uh, linear transponders are um, uh, very interesting. Um, uh, the repeater work uh, um, differently from the FM repeaters in a way that if the FM repeater uh, work on a single frequency, uh, the linear transponder use uh, uh, a wide band uh, for the uplink and wide band for the downlink. They have range of frequency uh, for each band. In this picture we can see that uh, the uplink for this example uh, satellite is starting on uh, 145.0 and up to 145.5. Uh, That's the uh, uplink VHF uh, band while the downlink is a UHF band. It's starting from uh, 435.0 up to 435.5 megahertz. Um, uh, um, uh, so if we transmit to this kind of um, satellite, we're using the uplink, the VHF, in some uh, frequency on the VHF band and the downlink will be in some frequency uh, on the UHF. Interesting to see that there is a, a set of frequency offset uh, between the receive signal and the transmit signal. Let's take an example that if we will transmit on 145.2, the downlink will be uh, 435.2. And if you will transmit on 145.4, the downlink will be on 435.4. You can see that the, there is a, the exact shift between the uh, uplink band and the downlink band. Note that most of the linear transponder satellites called uh, inverting transponder. For example, we can see that we can transmit on one sideband, for example, the uh, lower sideband, LSB. The, uh, the linear transponder will invert that and the downlink will be USB, the upper sideband. Uh, the exact information of each satellite can be found online, but and it's important to uh, be familiar with the with the satellite that you want to work on in advance, of course. But uh, uh, most of them are uh, inverting, and this is how um, they work. Interesting to mention uh, one more thing is that um, uh, we must use at least power as possible, uh, as the power is shared between all station on uh, the bandwidth and we want to avoid uh, reducing downlink power. So use the minimum that you need and there's some trick on how to do that. Uh, each uh, satellite have a beacon and you can try to get uh, the beacon signal and what you can do is transmit uh, on some free, free frequency 
and start to get your own signal and see what is your signal. And the idea here is that your own signal shouldn't be uh, higher than the beacon signal that you got. Uh, let's move to the stolen forward uh, digital relay satellites. These are very unique uh, satellites. With this kind of satellite, we can upload the message on one side of the Earth. The message will be uh, upload, upload to the satellite. The satellite will start in its orbit to the other side of the world and someone, uh, someone there will download that, uh, that message. Uh, this is work like a bulletin board, uh, uh, BBS, um, and it's a very interesting way to work with other stations that are not together with you in the same footprint, in the same cover area of the satellite. We can see in that uh, picture, example of how we can upload the message on uh, one side of the world, the satellite will continue in its orbit up to the next, above the next station and the other station can download it. So let's talk and mention about OSCAR. What is OSCAR? OSCAR it stands for uh, Orbiting Satellite Carrying Amateur Radio. It's the name that uh, we commonly use for uh, satellites of ham radio. Um, uh, the idea is that uh, uh, the, the designation is assigned, the name is assigned by AMSAT, the Amateur Radio uh, Satellite Organization. We will mention uh, that organization uh, in this video uh, in a few minutes. Um, and uh, everyone can use uh, uh, OSCAR satellites as long as you are a uh, licensed amateur radio because you need to transmit actually. And uh, these kinds of satellites we have from all types, from the FM, SSB, and data packet, APRS, all the options. And just about uh, uh, some trivia, uh, the first amateur satellite named OSCAR-1 uh, launched on uh, uh, December 12, 1961 and was in orbit only 22 days. So let's talk about satellite mode. Uh, the satellites mode uh, refer to um, the satellites uplink and downlink bands and we are using a set of uh, paired letters following structure of uh, 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 XY, like two letters, and that where uh, X is the uplink and Y is the downlink. And in the following uh, picture we can see uh, an example for that. So let's take the first one, uh, uh, the VU mode. You can see that the uplink is uh, 145 megahertz, it's the VHF, and the downlink is uh, uh, 435 megahertz, the UHF. And you can see that it's very easy to uh, remember and to understand because it's VU, V it means the uplink and U the downlink. VHF uplink, U, UHF uh, the downlink. Uh, in the past today we have different um, old mode uh, single letter uh, but currently we are using the new modes uh, as you see on the screen but it's good to know if you will find some of the old modes are mentioned somewhere. Uh, and it's also good to, uh, to be familiar with that uh, because sometimes you will see uh, for example this is a message that I got on Twitter that uh, AMSAT is updating that a specific satellite, in this uh, example it's OSCAR-92, that they switch it to mode uh, LV at some point and it will be like that for 24 hours and then it will be back to this normal mode. So this is why it's so important to be familiar with these uh, letters. So let's talk about Doppler shift. Doppler shift is an effect that we familiar uh, when we uh, hear a car or a train that coming uh, to us uh, very fast and we hear that the sound is changing as long as the train or the car is coming to us and it's also changing when it's going from us. The same idea, the same effect is happening with radio frequency of the satellites. And as we can see about the term of the Doppler shift is the change in frequency or wavelength of a wave for an observer who is moving relative to the wave source. We will have the Doppler uh, uh, shift effect as the satellite will come to us and will uh, continue to move from us uh, to the other horizon. 
and the very basic rule here is that uh, we are getting upward shift in frequency when the wave source is approaching and the opposite when the, uh, we are getting the downward shift in frequency when the wave is departing. And we can see in the uh, following uh, table an example to that. Note to the middle square with that frequency of 435 0.250 megahertz. That's the actual frequency of the satellite. So we can see that in this example, when the satellite will just raise above the horizon, it, that point is called AOS, and we'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, we'll mention that in the terminology. We will see that we will need to transmit a bit lower than the actual frequency of the satellite, and we will need, we will need to use 435.240 megahertz. And as long as the satellite will continue to approaching to us, we will change the frequency a bit higher to the point 0.245. And when it will be uh, exactly above us, or the let's say, or the op other option is when the satellite will be the closest to us, at the higher point that closer to us, the frequency will be the exact frequency that the satellite is actually uh, set for 250. And at that point, when the satellite will continue to move from us, uh, we will need to shift the frequency a bit more and up to the point that we will lose, uh, lose the signal, we will need to uh, move the, uh, the frequency a bit more. If you can see uh, the RX frequency, the received, the downing frequency, is not changing. The reason for that is that the Doppler shift effect uh, exists in all the frequencies but it's really have effect only from the UHF and above. So for example, for the VHF, change that it can be from the AOS to the LOS can be around and up to three kilohertz. So it's something that even we don't need to mention or change anything in our uh, receiver. So let's talk about terminology. It's very important to uh, be familiar with the terms as we will uh, find uh, these terms in articles, we'll find them uh, in every software that you're going to use and you will use uh, to work with satellites. Uh, there's not too much, but uh, the most important to be familiar are the following. The first one of the, is the AOS, is the acquisition of signal. It's uh, the time uh, that the satellite rises above the horizon of an observer. It's us, actually. The next point is the TC8, time of closest uh, approach. is the time when the satellite is closest uh, to us and was actually the Doppler shift is zero at that point. They usually uh, correspond to the time that the satellites reach maximum elevation above uh, the horizon. Uh, in this uh, uh, picture, for example, on the side, you can see that the point in the middle of this circle, uh, that's the TCA, actually. LOS is the loss of signal. It's the time that the satellite is passes below the, the observer horizon. That's the latest point that we will hear something from the uh, satellite. Footprint is the ground area that the satellites uh, offer coverage. We can walk stations that are uh, only exist in uh, the footprint uh, with us. Soon I will show you an example from uh, the software how we can see that footprint, so it will be easy to understand that. Uplink is the transmission of signals from the Earth to space and downlink is the receiving signals from space station to the Earth station. So let's see it, a demonstration. We will move to the screen, to the computer, and we will see all these terms in the software. In this demo, I'm using the GPredict software on the Linux operating system. With any software that you use, the first step is to set your home location. This is where you see my call sign. All the numbers that you will see will relate it to that location. Each dot that you see is a satellite, and you can see the name of the satellite underneath. The circle around that dot is the footprint of the satellite, the area that the satellites cover. Remember that you can communicate with the satellite and any station that exists only within this footprint. Here, on the right, we see a list of the satellites coming up and the information about their azimuth elevation and the exact time of their AOS and LOS. 
right click on one of them and we will get more information about the exact next passes of the specific satellite. In the table, we can see the terms that we talked about, like AOS, TCA, and LOS. In addition, we can see the duration and the maximum elevation for each pass. Double click on one of the passes and we will get more information about the specific pass. This can help us to prepare for the exact position of the satellites every few seconds. The Polar tab will show us all the information visually. In this example, in the polar map, we can see that the ISS is above us. The polar map shows us visually live details of the pass from the AOS to the LOS. When we double-click on a satellite, we will get information about its orbit and its transponders. The Transponder tab will provide us details about the available modes and frequencies. Here we can see an example of the uplink and downlink frequencies. Let's take another example of OSCAR 7. We can see that this is a linear transponder and we see the uplink and downlink bands. We can also see that it's an inverting transponder. Another piece of information that is interesting to see is the actual orbit. Right-click on the satellite and we can see its ground track. What do we actually need to walk with the birds, with the satellites? We need uh, some dual bender transceiver with cross band transmit receive capabilities or separate, for example, VHF and UHF uh, different transmitter or one transmitter and one receiver. This is actually what I'm using most of the time. Simple as that. It's a dual band, uh, VHF and UHF. Other options are actually to use uh, the actual uh, base station uh, that also have the option to work with split uh, frequencies. If we want to use the linear transponder, uh, remember that the linear transponder use SSB and CW. It means that you need transmitter and receiver for these kinds of uh, modes. Note that when we are using a dual band operation, there's two ways to uh, work. The half duplex or the full duplex. With the half duplex, sometimes called semi-duplex, we can only all transmit or receive at the same time. We cannot do that together. And the problem with that that you cannot hear yourself. Similar to FM repeater on Earth. Uh, with the full duplex, we can hear ourselves. We can transmit and receive at the same time. Uh, and thanks to that, there is a less chance that we will transmit over other stations, some overlapping. Uh, it's good for self-monitoring. We mentioned that we can use two bands and it means that we need two antennas but how can actually connect a single transceiver a dual band transceiver to two different antenna the vhf and the uhf antenna and the answer is very simple there is a device that's called deplexer the deplexer is a simple a passive device that implements uh, frequency uh, domain multiplexing what does it mean it builds just from a low pass filter and a high pass filter when we transmit or receive lower uh, frequency, for example, the VHF, it will go to one antenna. If it's the UHF, the other antenna. Remember that you need it only uh, if, you need, if you have a single transceiver and two antenna. Is that the only way that you can work? Uh, absolutely not. There is an option also to use special dedicated transceiver or transmitter actually. There is an option to use a dedicated transmitter for one band and dedicated receiver to the other band. And here, if you will say, okay, so now I need more equipment, so it's uh, more expensive. So there is a solution for that. Uh, there are kind of uh, SDR dongles, uh, software-defined radio dongles, 
uh, that very cheap you can find it maybe in 20 30 dollars um, something like that out there and thanks to that that you can it can help you to monitor your transmission you can listen to yourself it can act as your main receiver you can see a full spectrum of the band all the time and it's easy to know what's going on with the frequency if there's some shift or not if it's ssb you can know exactly where the station are now operating and thanks to that these dongles that they are tiny you can uh, connect them even to a smartphone so even you go up, if you go outside with your um, handheld uh, transmitter uh, you can use uh, your smartphone as the receiver so let's move to antennas there's a few options for antennas what you can see here is for example the air antenna that i'm using and you can see it on uh, other videos that i did already uh, show I, how I operate this kind of antenna. Very light antenna, you can uh, use it uh, as a handheld antenna, like to hold uh, um, the handheld and just move it uh, with your hand. Other option, if you can see, uh, when I'm using it, I'm using a tripod of a camera and it's much easier for me to operate it. There are other options for fixed antennas that you can put uh, special antennas on a special structure one antenna for example on uh, for the vhf and one antenna for the uhf on the same structure know that for these kind of antennas you will need special rotor that it can move on two or three axes for not just for the azimuth but maybe for the uh, elevation uh, and the polarity uh, and one more kind of uh, antennas that you can do is actually use uh, homemade antenna. This is for example an antenna that I built. It's called the measure tape antenna uh, and I will um, add the special link uh, in the description of this video on how you can build it. This is how it's uh, um, packed. You can just uh, open the antenna, open the radial this way. Very simple, very light and that's it. You have an antenna. That's a, a build from a tape uh, measure uh, pieces you can see it here uh, and a few pieces of uh, PVC here is the coax how it's connected uh, to the um, the main uh, radials but other than that a few dollars and you have this kind of antenna it is great let's talk about some software software will give you lots of information for example where the satellites will come from when the where the satellite will going to go to uh, what is the max elevation of the satellites you will know exactly when at, at every every second where the satellite will be uh, out there and will need to uh, and you will need to uh, move your antenna to that direction software will show you for example which satellite will be above you when what time what date and exactly up to the second and very important because when these satellites are above us the time from one horizon to the other horizon can be up to maximum maybe 14 or 15 minutes and the option to actually do a QSO will be uh, we are talking about minutes maybe six seven minutes not more than that uh, software exists for mostly all the operating system that out there you can see for the Linux the Windows the Mac Android iPhone and even if you any computer that can um, uh, run a Java application if there is Java package for that as well uh, I will show you soon on the AMSAT website a long long list of uh, software that are optional for the use now we mentioned AMSAT a few times uh, on this video and we need to be familiar with this uh, organization. First AMSAT is the Radio Amateur Satellite Corporation and the link is the www.amsat.org. Uh, AMSAT is the um, um, radio uh, amateur group that actually manage and coordinate everything that's related to ham radio satellites. Uh, on that website uh, you will find all the updated uh, uh, information that you need about all the satellites which is um, uh, op in operation which is not what type of satellites uh, uh, are, are for FM what type of satellites uh, which type of satellites is for um, uh, linear transponders 
and and uh, you will find lots of information uh, for education about that. So let's move uh, to the uh, computer again and we'll see some interesting links and important links in that website. So let's go to amsat.org. First, let's go to the Education tab and choose for Beginners. You will find a list of Getting Started article. Very interesting. Under the Satellite Info tab, let's take the current status. We will find a large table that shows up-to-date status of all the satellites. It based on real-time information from HAMS around the world. We can see the type of the satellite, if it's a linear transponder, telemetry, or even if there was no signal. Each number represents how many stations reported on that. Here, for example, we can see when Oscar 92 was in LV mode and when in UV mode. Back to the Satellite Info tab and choose Satellite Schedule. Here we will find information if there is a schedule for a satellite to change its modes. Here we can see that Falcon Sat 3 is available for BBS, store and forward operation. Back to the Satellite Info tab and choose Communication Satellites. We will find information about each type of satellite, like which is FM repeater and which is a linear transponder. When we choose a satellite, we will get an interesting detailed description about it. Under Services, we will find Awards. Here, we will find a list of awards to recognize our achievements. I recommend you to start with the Satellite Communication Achievement Award. It's a very simple one and you will get it to recognize your first satellite QSO. So let's go to the Satellite Info tab and there Satellite Related Software. And here there is a link that will take us to a page with a long long list with satellite tracking software for all the operating systems that are out there. You can find here even software that can control your transceiver and your antenna rotor. So we are at the point that we are ready to do our first gear so. And But before that gear so, let's review a few um, tips uh, as preparation for that. Uh, first, you need to check uh, the time of the pass, the date, uh, AOS, LOS, elevation, everything to be ready for that. Where, where to direct the antenna, uh, set the radio to the right frequency. Better to find a place when you are, have a free area for the sky. For example, if you have building or mountains around you, try to find a better place with more sky that you can see. Don't forget about the Doppler shift that we mentioned already that is relevant from the 70 centimeter, the UHF and above. So prepare to the, for the frequency that you will need to change during the QSO. During the pass, open the squelch because sometimes, especially when the uh, satellite just come uh, above the horizon, the AOS point, it will be very weak signal. So just open the squelch and be ready for the signals. Adjust the position and antenna during the pass don't forget the polarity as well. Remember, FM QSO is a short QSO. Other hams are waiting as well to do their QSO, so do the QSO shortly. Don't forget, don't transmit if you can't hear the satellites. Wait first to hear something, then you start your QSO. This is an example of the main template for QSO. I'm trying to talk with uh, W1AW, so it will start that I call uh, whiskey 1 Alpha Whiskey, this is November 6, Juliet Juliet from Delta Mike 04, that's my location. And uh, the Whiskey 1 Alpha Whiskey will, will reply to me 
November 6, Julia Juliet from Delta Mike 04. This is Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey. Fox November 31, QSL. I will reply to them. Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey, Fox November 31. Thanks, QSL 73. And at the end, they will reply to me, QSL, thank you, 73. If we're talking about SSB QSO, um, it's similar to the FM, but with some difference. Don't forget, it could be an inverting QSO, that uplink will be one sideband and downlink will be the other sideband. Be prepared for that. You can call a CQ because this is a wide band and you can find some free frequency. It could be that someone will reply to you. We mentioned that already, just not use too much power as it will reduce the downlink power for everyone. Okay, so let's move to some tips. The first tip will be about the software. With whichever software that you are using uh, on your computer, on your uh, smartphone, first step that you need to do is set your home location. All the numbers that you will see there are relevant and related to your home location. Um, for your first QSO, um, the recommendation is try to use high angles. Uh, do it late night and or early morning. The reason for that is uh, that you want a bit more quiet frequency, less ham radio on it. Uh, so late night or early morning are the better times. And high angle is because that the uh, signal will be stronger. When you think you're a pro, great, uh, move to the next step. Try lower angles. And the reason for that, uh, uh, that you can do a long distance uh, QSO. For FM repeaters, don't forget, uh, short QSO, uh, lots of ham radio waiting for uh, their QSO as well. Uh, don't forget about the Doppler effect and some tips here are, um, you can prepare your uh, um, handheld transmitter with memories for all the frequency of the shifts. So it means that during the QSO, you don't need to change any frequency, but just moving to memory one, memory two, memory three, uh, uh, based on the, on the shift. Uh, if you uh, saw the other um, uh, video about how I did this, uh, the QSO uh, with the satellite, you see that on one hand, uh, you're holding the antenna, one hand you're holding the handheld. So how you can write uh, all the details of the QSO. So uh, one, of the uh, the, one of the recommendations here uh, is just take some, uh, 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 some device to record your QSO. So later you can just uh, write down uh, all the details. It could be that you will find yourself in a situation that the satellite is above you, but you not hear anything. And it could be that the satellite is just sleeping right now and you just need to turn it on. And the option to do that is set your um, transmitter with uh, a PL, a CTCSS tone of 74.4 Hertz. Um, just send it to the satellites for a few seconds and that will turn the satellites on. Once the, the satellite is on, you can change back to the uh, standard PL of that satellite, usually 67 Hertz, and you can continue with standard uh, communication. We mentioned earlier about the, the option to use a two or three axis uh, rotor if you want an antenna out uh, on your roof. Um, and, we, and these kind of rotors are a bit expensive, so do we actually need them? Let's see this uh, diagram. And you can see that if we'll take a standard Yagi or beam antenna, the standard average estimation of the bandwidth of this kind of antenna is about 50 degree. And, and that's the green area that you can see. If you can see the lower 15 degree are area that usually you have some obstacles. Uh, like uh, ho uh, houses or um, uh, mountains. And the upper 15 degree that you can see up there are the chances that the satellites will be actually above us about like 80 or 90 degree. That can happen, of course, but it's less chances. Most of the chances that the satellites uh, in most of its passes will be lower than that. So if you, can, the, if you will take the first 15 degrees, and the upper 15 degrees and uh, the bandwidth of 50 degree, we can see that 
if you will set the antenna in, at 45 degree, we will have the option to communicate with like around 70% of the satellites and the passes of them all the time. Of course, we will not have the option to do lower angles or higher angles, but most of the chances and more of the, of the passes can be used uh, in this kind of configuration and for that you need also only a simple standard water that can do only azimuth and that's make your setup uh, cheaper. Uh, the recommendation is just follow AMSAT on Twitter. Uh, AMSAT sending lots of information almost every day, few times a day about the satellites, uh, about their operation and if you do want to work with some satellites better to be updated about um, the modes uh, and other, other situations uh, that changing all the time. That's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to give some information and more knowledge to everyone, even if it's the, your first QSO or even you had already some QSO. I hope I did it. Uh, if so, I will be happy if you can subscribe to give more motivation to provide more videos like that and uh, hope to on the birds. Uh, so 73 and thank you.